Hello everyone, and in this video, we are going to talk about how to design an ultra precise current voltage power charge monitor. We're going to use the Texas Instruments INA228 for this video. And in order to build this chip, uh, we are going to select, uh, in order to build the sensor, we're going to select this chip. So what are the features of this particular component? It's able to measure the current, it's able to measure voltage, it's able to measure the power, and it's also able to measure the energy, the charge, and it'll give you an alert signal once you set a particular threshold. Uh, it's an ultra precise, it's 20 bit, so it's a very, it's a digital converter, it's a digital sensor, which means that in order to communicate with this and get the readings, you will have to communicate through the I2C bus. The chip itself has uh, an input, an analog input to measure the voltage and current. And A0 and A1, I believe, is for the I2C address so that you could have a couple of these chips uh, connected in components connected in, uh, in the same bus. And by changing the values of A0 and A1, you change the address. And when you change the address, then you can communicate with one of, you, you can communicate with one individual component because you know the address. So that's what we have over here. So let's get started in starting to um, see how this breakout board would work. And we can get started designing it. Before we do so, let's look at the data sheet because uh, it does give you an idea of how you want to design the board. And also there's a development board by Texas Instrument, which can give us some reference layout that we could use when we're designing this board. So uh, let's go out there and open up the development board. And we'll also look at the data sheet. The data sheet tells you how you, I mean, gives you all the inf information based on the packaging, the ratings, how you need to design the components itself, and how you communicate with the component using the I2C bus. Uh, these are all the thresholds and how it measures, what's the efficiency, detailed description, the internal oscillation, yeah. In the meanwhile, so this is the development board that they give as a reference uh, design so that you could base your design based on what they've developed. And one thing that I did notice when looking at this particular component is the way the, the, the PCB is designed. So I'm just going to go to the bottom of the page where it says schematic and PCB layout. Here, if you really see, they have a lot, they have four terminals to connect to measure the, measure the, uh, the current flowing through the shunt resistor. And, uh, And we're going to talk a little bit about why we want to uh, not just have two inputs, but we want to have four inputs. And then the and in the footprint, they have like two for in and two for in plus and in minus. So let's understand how this uh, sensor actually works and what is the connection to make sense of the connection. It's then the data sheet. So let me go to that page where they explain it. Uh, let's be circuit device. Programming, typical application design requirements. I think it's in there. All right, here we have it. Uh, supply bypass voltage. Uh, this is a one layered example. Shunt resistor selection. All right, so this is what I was looking at. Okay, so here you have the battery input and battery output, and that's connected to the V bus. So you're measuring the voltage with respect to the ground, and that gives you the voltage. And why do we need to measure the voltage? Because if you're measuring power, power is equals to voltage into current. So the current flowing through the whole system multiplied by the voltage will give you the power consumed by the system. Here you have a shunt resistor, so 
you are measuring it right from the high high side and the shunt resistance will have it'll be in milli 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 ohms and the voltage drop across this resistance will give you the current flowing so v is equals to ir the voltage drop will give you the i you know the resistance which is a fixed value and from there you can calculate the the current flowing through the device and the current flowing through this resistance will be equal to the current flowing through the whole load and that's why you know that you you can measure the current flowing through this resistance uh, as an indication of how much current is flowing through the whole system because it's going to be the same and when you multiply that you get the power so when you're designing this you want to make sure because it's an ultra sensitive device even the soldering connection the way it's placed will will matter because even the trace width on the PCB has a resistance it's not an i it's not you know resistance free <coughs> Sorry, it's not resistance free, and and this sensor might measure even those resistance, the traces on the PCB. So designing this properly, making sure we're able to account for any possible noise or external disturbance, must be carefully uh, understood so that we don't we don't you, we don't feed the sensor, you know, information that shouldn't be fed it to so we want to make sure the trace width between on the trace length between that is measuring the positive end of the resistor and the negative end is the same because it, and if, if they're mismatched then one part will measure more will, will half will have more resistance than the other and they may be a mismatch and we may not get an accurate reading so let's go about and design let's go and start designing this uh, board um, over here so the schematic is very straightforward. Oh, this is the USB to SPI. Let me open this one. Yeah, it's very straightforward. You, we have the in plus and in minus connected to the shunt resistor. We have the V bus, which is going to be the voltage in the ground V source with a decoupling capacitor with 100 nanofarad capacitance. We have an alert signal. So based on what we program, we can ask it to we can tell the component to alert us if something is not right or if it crosses the threshold that we've set. And here we have pull-up resistors for the I2C protocol. We have two headers. One, one header is for communicating uh, through the embedded protocol I2C. And the second one is basically, it's called the Kelvin con connection in the sense that you are, we, are, we are segregating or separating the voltage and the current. And the current will have its own inputs and the voltage will have its own inputs. So let me show you how the system looks. So what we have over here is uh, we've got two plugs for cu sending current in and sending current and one is going to the positive end of the shunt resistance and two for the negative end for the of the shunt resistance. One is for voltage and one is for ground. The parameters are all over here. So shunt in, shunt out, and voltage. So when we're designing the board, we have two, we have taken two pins for shunt out and shunt in. So you, so generally shunt in and voltage in will be at the same voltage, but we have still separated it at least from the, at the PCB level. But when you're feeding in the input, uh, that's most likely coming from the battery, you'll have one bat one the positive end fed into the voltage in and in shunt in. This also allows you to whether you want to place this at the high end of the sensing device or the low end. Low end in the sense that you could also place this component. Sometimes you place it above the load or you can even place this current sensor just below ground. Oh sorry, just below uh, below the load when it's when it's reaching the ground. So the negative part will be the ground and the positive part would be the end of all the all the load connections so so it gives you the uh, flexibility where you want to position the the r shunt the width and the length that is going to the positive and negative is should be approximately the same i've just eyeballed it i'm not really you know gone extra length to make sure it's max length matching but it gives you an approximation the soldering of the components will also matter because uh, even the soldering will have resistance and this ultra sensitive sensor could account for soldering mismatches or soldering in, um, uh, inaccuracies 
and the rest is just connecting the wires to the or the nets from one point to the other point it's pretty straightforward we do have a 3.3 volt uh, polygon on the top layer it's a two layer pcb it's a 3.3 volt if i go to the properties uh, oh my comp is a little slow yeah so the 3.3 volt over here and and the bottom layer is full ground so that's what we have over here and we can have a look at the bottom layer it's just full ground and to have a look again it it looks like this it's a small pcb what the, what are the dimensions let's have a look at the dimension uh, measuring distance so the dimension is so we got around three 32.3 millimeters so it's around three centimeters by by two centimeters 21.9 so 22 cent so 2.2 centimeters so three so 3.2 centimeters by 2.2 centimeters so it's quite small it's uh, that's the goal and it's ultra precise current sensing device and we need this when we want to measure the total power consumption of your drone it, these devices are very handy so that you can optimize your device for maximizing battery power, understanding whether what's consuming the most amount of power and trying to optimize the power input, power consumption of your device. And these sensors are invaluable to making better des design decisions. And the more we understand and understand the our, our system, the data we collect, the more the better we are able to optimize and make the design better and that's really what we're trying to do in the beginning of this design process is to get all the necessary sensors at the embedded level so that we can debug quicker and debug uh, how we want to design our drone and robots so that's about it for this video and if you like some of these videos, please subscribe. We're gonna design many embedded systems like this. They, some will be small, some are gonna be big. And at part two of the video, we'll buy all the components, we'll solder it, and then we'll test it out. Uh, and many of these embedded breakout board videos will have part one and part two. So if you enjoy, please subscribe. And I can't wait to uh, see you guys in the next video. Thank you.